This video was brought to you by Algolaser and Gearberry. This aircraft hangar diorama is not something you can get off the shelf. This is something that I've custom designed, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can make one too. Using some 3mm MDF, the new Algo Laser Delta, and some very simple modelling techniques. Hello everyone, I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and welcome back to the workbench as I show you how you can create this awesome aircraft hangar diorama too. Firstly, I had to come up with a design, so this was probably the hardest part of the entire build, trying to think about what I wanted this hangar to look like, but doing it all in two dimensions. So I had to teach myself how to use LibreCAD, which is a free two-dimensional technical drawing tool. It was in this software that I designed all of the parts. I didn't really go for a scale accurate hangar representation, but instead went for my own version of one. Next, when I had all of the parts designed that I thought that I would need, I imported them into Lightburn, which is a software which allows you to position them on the build plate and then control the laser cutter directly. Don't worry though, you won't have to design your own parts if you want to replicate this project, because I will post all of the files over on my Patreon, so go and take a look over there so that you can get your hands on the files for this project. I realised though that I hadn't actually used the laser cutter yet, so I needed a test project. Unfortunately, that meant waiting quite a while. I had to set the algo laser up outside because I had no space inside and when cutting various materials it will produce smoke, so you need to do it in a ventilated space. Unfortunately, the UK has had about six weeks of rain non-stop, so eventually when there was one dry day in the gap of grey, I set up the laser outside. Now a good thing about this laser is that it comes pretty much pre-assembled, there's only a few small things to attach, so there's not going to be an unboxing in this video. As long as you can follow instructions and know how to use an allen key, which is included, then you are onto a winner. For my test project I thought it would be cool to make a branded keyring, so I designed one very quickly in Lightburn and set it up to print. On Lightburn you can make sure that it fits inside of the print area by clicking the frame button and it will draw a little line around the area where it's going to cut just so you know you've got your bed and your material in the right place. I then set it to cut. So in this particular keyring it's not only going to cut the keyring out but it's also going to etch my logo onto them. Making sure to wear my protective goggles which come in the box of the laser cutter, I set about testing the different cut and etch speeds to make sure I could get it right for when I come to cut out my hanger. So whilst I'm figuring out the correct cutting speeds, what else can this laser cutter do? Well, it's got different ways that you can control it. It has a touch screen which allows you to control the machine directly, so you can put your own files on there and then engrave directly from there. Alternatively, there is also a mobile app which allows you to connect to the device and do your cutting from there, or alternatively you can run it directly from a laptop or PC just like I have in this video. It has a rather generous work area and a built-in smart air pump which prevents excess burn on your parts. And with an engraving speed of up to 500mm a second, it's one of the fastest out there. The focusing feature on this device is really simple as well, all you need to do is lower down the arm so it's touching your materials, and then drop down the laser head. At this point you just lock it into place, and then pop the spring loaded foot back into place and you're at the right height, no matter what material you're cutting. But that's not all the features that this laser cutter has. It has a powerful motherboard, which helps power all these different functions. Additionally, due to the fact that there is minimal installation, you can be up and running in about 10 minutes or so. And for cutting different materials, it can cut up to 30mm pine wood in one pass. Naturally, other materials may need extra passes, but for me, I found that it cut 3mm MDF at 7mm per second at 100% power with no issues whatsoever. It does feature a number of safety measures as well, particularly the offset and tilt detections, current and voltage protection, and my personal favourite is the emergency stop switch, so you can just hit that if you've got an issue, and the key lock, which will prevent people from using this without first unlocking the device. 
After a bit of trial and error though, I think I've got to the point where I'm happy with my little key ring. So this was done at seven millimeters a second with 100% power for the cutting and 20 millimeters a second and 20% power for the etching. And as you can see, it has done a really good job. The cuts are nice and neat and the etching is pretty fine as well. I think I'm now ready to start cutting out the parts for my airfield diorama. And just like the key ring, having already put the parts into Lightburn, I sent it to the cutter and it got to work. I kind of have to make sure I get all of the parts in one go though, because I don't really have a chance to get back out into the garden to do this again soon, given that we've forecast some more rain over the next few weeks. So I can't really afford to make any mistakes at this point. One small thing I think is worth mentioning is that I didn't just use 3mm MDF on this build. I actually used some very thin A3 card to cut out some paving slabs which I'm going to use on the base of the diorama. These were again designed in exactly the same way but this time I had to change the settings so that the cutting power was a little bit more reduced and the speed a little bit higher just so that it wouldn't completely burn the card as it cuts through it. I did design these parts to be connected to the card with little tabs just so they wouldn't blow away in the wind. And these were the last parts to cut out. So with everything cut out and no chance to make any more due to the weather, let's head back inside onto the workbench and start putting things together. The parts on this sheet were cut out accidentally with a slightly lower power setting, which I didn't realize at the time compared to the rest of the parts, but that's not really an issue because all I needed to do was just take my knife to them and carefully remove them from the MDF sheet. I'd go through and clean up all of the parts to make sure I had everything that I needed and that all of the small details were present. This large half of a circle is going to be the back of the hanger and I just need to glue on a supporting frame and there are two of these frames that I've designed in the kit. So one goes at the front and one goes at the back here. And all of this is going to be simply glued together using some general purpose glue. This then gets glued into place on the bottom part of the hanger. I'm really happy with the design of what is effectively my first ever model kit that I've designed. So this goes together really simply and everything just fits really nice and well, which is also testament to the accuracy of the laser cutter. After gluing this bit to the back of the hanger, all of the little notches can now have their arches glued into. And again, they fit really well because the cutouts are the perfect size. So you need nine of these and they go into the relevant holes. And to be brutally honest, the glue was a bit overkill because they do fit quite snugly, but I just want to make sure that they all fit in and stay there. With those arches glued into place, the final arch is the second of the support arches. This one doesn't have the extra detail holes on. The detailing holes did make the cutting time a little bit longer, but they do add that extra something to the kit when it's finished. Now it's time to look at the two doors which go at the front of the hanger. I've designed this to have four supporting frames which get glued into place in you know, more or less equal positions. There was no guidelines or maths in this. It was just where they fit, which is pretty much at equal spacings. With those two doors done, I did want to add a little bit of extra detailing. So to do that, I'm going to run some strips of the three millimeter MDF into more of a framework pattern. So to do this, I'd already designed and cut out some three millimeter square strips. And all I simply did was measure and mark where they would fit and then cut them to the right length with my snips. Again, these would then be glued into place. Had I been a little bit smarter, I could have designed this whole part to be laser cut and slot together much like a box but I didn't think about it at the time and there was no time to go back outside because the rain had again started but with some perseverance I got to the point that I was happy and I moved on. To add some lights inside of this hanger, I've got a 12 volt strip of LEDs, simply soldered some wires onto the end of them and then glued them into the roof of the hanger. I did mask the LEDs and will remove the masking later after painting. 
To add a roof to the hanger, I simply glued on some cardboard, which I cut to the right size. And now I need a base for my diorama. This is simply a sheet of 3mm MDF, which has been framed with some timber. I've prepared all the laser cut parts with some rust red spray primer. And here I am simply marking the hanger on the diorama base so I know where everything needs to go. I then drilled out the hole for the wires and then I could push the wires through this hole. I will attach a 9 volt battery to power the LEDs a little bit later. It was at this point I realised that I had my tarmac slabs to put down. So I cut these away from their card sheets and then glued them into the relevant place on the diorama base. I did have to remove the hanger to do this so I'm glad that I haven't already glued that down. But this was quite a simple process and it is a technique that I've used before and it looks alright to my eye. I gave the tarmac slabs, the internal areas of the hanger, and the back of the hanger doors a spray with some grey primer. This looks about right to give a sort of concrete effect and I'm happy with how it looks. Moving on from this, I have painted the external areas of the hanger using some green paint to give it a more airfield kind of look, but I'd call it messy painting because I still want some of that rust red to show through in various places. And in this step here, I'm simply dry brushing some light grey paint onto these parts to bring out the details and give them some further tonal variation. Now that I've painted the hanger, it can be glued down onto the base in the correct position, again using the same general purpose glue as before. I then added these extra supporting external braces. There are four of these and two go on each side. This just adds a further bit of detail. I had two of the 3mm strips that I laser cut left over, so these have been painted with a very dark grey paint and then given the light grey dry brushing as well. These were glued either side of the hanger to give the impression of the roller tracks for where the doors would go along when they open. In preparation for the grass, I mixed up some PVA glue and some brown paint. This is going to create a muddy kind of glue, which was painted over all the areas where I wanted the grass to grow. And then the grass was shaken onto the diorama using this static grass applicator. This is just one of those simple plastic pot ones. And when that was dry, the excess grass was carefully vacuumed away to leave a nice clean finish. I glued the two hanger doors into position on either side of the hanger. You could, if you wanted to, put the hanger doors in a closed position because they are designed to fit that way, but I wanted to show off the inside of the hanger in this build as well. But that's up to you if you decide to build this for yourself. The final step was to add some suitable 3D printed details such as vehicles and figures to the scene. I know some of them aren't necessarily prototypically accurate for the time period, but I'm quite happy with how this looks. Not forgetting, of course, a suitably sized aircraft. This is my 1 to 100 scale lightning. And with that, I called my build of this custom aircraft hangar diorama complete. So what do you think? I am so happy with the way that this has turned out. I don't normally do dioramas and I don't normally do big projects and this is a little bit of both. So I am so pleased with the way this looks and also the fact that I designed this pretty much off the top of my head without pre-cutting anything and I managed to get all the parts right first time when they cut out is absolutely amazing. So if you want the files for this one, please go ahead and look at my Patreon where you can download them over there. I'd love to know if anybody else fancies having a go at this one for themselves. I did design this to be 1 to 100 scale, but I think that it would look great in 1 to 144. Obviously, it would just be a bit bigger compared to the aircraft that are in there. Maybe suitable for something small in 172nd, but with the files, you could scale them up or down depending on whether you wanted to resize them for your particular needs. 
I found the Algo Laser Delta, a really easy to use machine and I'm looking forward to using it in some more projects in the future. If you'd like to get your hands on an Algo Laser Delta, please use the link to the Gearberry website down in the description where you can get some exclusive perks. To find out more about that, make sure you click that link. A big thank you to Algo Laser and Gearberry for sponsoring this video and making this project possible. I think it's probably time to wrap up this video though and I am super happy with how my 1 to 100 scale aircraft hangar has turned out. I love the fact that everything just went together perfectly first time and the parts that were cut out are true to the designs that I created. Let me know what you think of this diorama down in the comments and drop a like if you enjoyed this video. As always, a quick shout out to my channel members and patrons for the extra support they give the channel. A massive thanks to these guys on screen. If you'd like to join our model club, make sure you take a look at the links in the description. And don't forget that the files to this aircraft hangar are over on my Patreon. There are other ways to help support this channel if you'd like to do so. Again, full information is below the video. However, the best way to support the channel for free is by clicking that subscribe button and turning notifications on so you never miss a modeling video. Finally though, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.